This is Hear Me Out. I'm your host, Celeste Headley. As summertime travel winds down, we want to talk about cruises. Now, hear us out. Going on a cruise is one of the few really, really polarizing ways people have fun. You love cruises, you hate them. There is very little middle ground here. And if you think cruises are trashy, tacky, dangerous, or whatever else, maybe, just maybe, you should think again. You might not be above having fun on a cruise. Sometimes it's okay to just sit in a beach chair and not worry about whether you are doing the absolute most you can to extract every second out of your vacation, like the most adventure and the coolest stuff. No, you don't always have to do that. Ezra Dyer, senior editor at Car and Driver magazine, joins us to defend the cruise. Stay with us. A lot of us probably struggle with sleep hygiene, how to fall asleep, stay asleep, and get restful sleep. But did you know that improving your sleep hygiene could help improve your overall health? Health Break, a podcast by UPMC Health Plan, dives into this topic with advice and tips you can use from our expert wellness health coaches. Listen now to find out how you can start improving your sleep at upmchp.us slash healthbreaksleep. That's upmchp.us slash healthbreaksleep. Welcome back to Hear Me Out. I'm Celeste Headley. And look, let's just get this out there. I am not a cruise person. I have never been on a cruise, nor wanted to go on one. And in fact, no one on our team is into cruise ships, in theory or in practice. In fact, one member of our team went on a cruise begrudgingly recently and almost immediately became ill. And we are very sorry that happened, obviously. But it does feel as though that was in some way a predictable outcome. Cruises are polarizing, and it even comes back to politics, as do so many things. In a YouGov survey last year, a little over 50% of respondents said they'd feel uncomfortable on a cruise. Most anti-cruise folks identified as Democrats, and of the respondents who were comfortable, the majority were Republicans. Now, that divide might reflect factors like COVID risk aversion more than it does just plain old conservative versus liberal politics per se. But the fact remains we're split down the middle on cruises. And if you think you are too cool to go on a cruise. You're too cool for shuffleboard. You're too cool for a seafood buffet. Too discerning for that cruise line singer. Ezra Dyer says you're probably wrong. Ezra is a senior editor at Car and Driver magazine, and he recently wrote a piece for the New York Times about, well, defending the cruise. Ezra, welcome. Hello. So I, I have to ask how you ended up writing about cruises. Have you gone on cruises for a long time? Um, the first cruise that I went on was largely by accident. I had been dating my future wife at that point for about three weeks. And she said, hey, I'm going on this cruise with my whole family. And uh, do you want to come come along? And I figured, well, this will suss things out, whether it's going to go good or, <laughs> or poorly, then we're going to find out how much we like each other if we're stuck. Kind of like boat. going to Ikea together, right? If you can survive it. Yeah, it was being it's being tossed into the crucible uh, feet first. So we went on this cruise and it was Holland America. It was Caribbean. I, I was quite impressed. Um, somewhere along the line, her older brother got uh, kicked off the cruise ship. So thus making me look good in comparison with the family. <laughs> and uh, so overall, I had a good time. And um, I was surprised I had a good time because I didn't see myself as a cruise person. I thought, I'm too cool for this. I like adventures. I don't need somebody to hold my hand on a vacation and walk me through a daily schedule of activities. And I don't need to wake up in the morning and know exactly where I'm going. That's not my thing. But I discovered that occasionally it can be my thing. And you don't always need to have the craziest adventure of your life when you're on a vacation. And sometimes it's okay to just tune out and sit in a, a beach chair and not worry about whether you are doing the absolute most you can to extract every second out of your vacation, like the most the most adventure and the coolest stuff, places everybody wants to go. No, you don't always have to do that. So that's how I've ended up going on several more cruises over the years. 
Okay, I mean, somebody who works for Car and Driver, Car and Driver is admittedly a pretty cool publication, right? I mean, sure. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's pretty cool. Admittedly, much cooler than, say, Good Housekeeping. A- apologies to those who write for Good Housekeeping. But cruises, you know, they're associated with, like, the Lido deck. Let's talk first about why you felt cruises weren't cool. Because I feel like those are exactly the same stereotypes that I have in my head when I think about what you do when you're on a cruise ship. You're you're limited in what you're able to do. You're you're literally stuck in this one location. You can't go anywhere. You definitely can't drive a car, but you're stuck with the same <laughs> oh, people. Oh, I, I beg to differ. There are cruise ships now that have go-kart tracks on them. And um, to your point about I understand the the whole reluctance about being stuck on a boat with thousands of people. It sounds awful. It it could be your worst nightmare. But yeah. you're stuck on a thousand foot long boat that has 12 stories and it has uh let's say 10 bars and five restaurants that you'll like that aren't buffets that you can go in and actually sit down and ha- you know go to a restaurant and pools and a casino if that's what you're into and basketball courts and the notion that you're stuck on this thing i mean if you get bored on a cruise ship then you've gone on a cruise that's way too long because there's a lot to do and they go places you're not on the cruise ship the entire time you pull up in port and once you're off the cruise ship you can do whatever you want i mean there are excursions where you would be uh grouped with your fellow passengers and sent on some kind of a prepackaged thing. And I don't do those. Like the most recent cruise that we took, we were in Nassau. We rented a boat and uh, went out to an uninhabited island and and drank some drinks out of coconuts. And that's that's the kind of thing that people who hate cruises would love to do. Well, how do you get to do that, though? How do you get there? Are you going to fly down and then stay in a hotel? Or how do you get to the point where you can do that thing? A cruise ship just drops you off for the day and you're left to your own devices. And if you want to go have the kind of adventure that people who shun cruises would want to have, that's totally on the table. As long as you're back by five o'clock, because that's when the ship leaves. Okay. So, you know, the point of this whole show is is to to have disagreements in a respectful way without calling each other names. <laughs> and I and I want to be clear on what we're disagreeing about here. Right. Because I don't think you and I are disagreeing that cruise ships are are ecological disasters. Right. When you're talking about a ship that's large enough to have a go kart, that's not environmentally friendly. Right. We're not disagreeing on that. Well, I don't know that. I honestly don't know. I don't know what the carbon footprint is of that vacation versus those 3000 people all, you know, spreading to the wind and flying. What if those 3000 people all got on planes and flew somewhere? Is that worse than all of them getting on a single ship uh, that's powered by gas turbines and going somewhere? I mean, I I don't know that. It seems like they're bad, but maybe that's a different story. So maybe I do disagree about that a little bit, but I don't really have the information to say. Okay. So I, you know, I feel comfortable saying yes. Uh <laughs> Yes, they are. Um, but, you know, only because I rely on the expertise of the environmentalists who say that they're ecological disasters. But I, it's fair to say at least that because you're not making that argument, we're not disagreeing on that. Right. That's fair. The, the, the argument you're making is is limited to the cool factor. It, right. Well, I'm not arguing that they're cool. I'm arguing that perhaps you yourself are not as cool as you think you are because you might get on a cruise ship and think all right this this isn't so bad everyone has to look everyone has to look inside themselves and see if deep inside there's a cruise ship passenger in there waiting to get out someone who would enjoy sitting on the lido deck with a uh, drink in hand and tell you what if you're into people watching there's some great people watching on a cruise ship (laughs) like the guy i saw wearing socks in the pool who I was sneakily taking photos of just to show people who wouldn't believe that. Oh no, that's that happens. Oh, so you're saying I'm not that cool. <laughs> like in general, people aren't that cool, but because I'm I'm people, I'm not that cool. I'm saying that however cool you are, you may find that your 
your attitude can accommodate the cruise ship situation, even if you're treating it ironically, as I did sometimes. (laughs) Ha ha ha. Look at these fools with their line dancing. But yet I'm here watching them. So that's the cosmic mental collision that you deal with, the cognitive dissonance between your own self-perception and the fact that you are there and often having a good time with a crowd that you might not normally be hanging out with, let's say. Okay, so this is fascinating. This has taken a turn. Um, I am anxious to get back, but we're going to take the break first. Am I or any of you listening, do you deserve to make fun of people who take cruises? Ezra Dyer says no. This is Hear Me Out, a podcast from Slate. I'm Celeste Headley. We'll be back in a moment. What does it mean to be Black in America? In NPR's Black Stories, Black Truths, a collection of stories as varied, nuanced, and dynamic as Black experiences, you'll hear it means everything. Search NPR Black Stories, Black Truths wherever you get your podcasts. We're back. This is Hear Me Out, a podcast from Slate. I'm Celeste Headley, and today we're talking about cruise ships and whether they're cool. In fact, not even whether cruise ships are cool, but whether you're cool on the cruise ship or off the cruise ship. And with us is Ezra Dyer, who says, you're not cooler than cruise ships. (laughs) And so maybe you should stop making assumptions about whether you would enjoy a cruise ship or not. And this is fascinating to me because cruise ships do take a lot of Mockery. People do mock cruise ships a lot. Um, And there is sort of this tone that people are too cool for school, right? That, you know, I'm, I'm way too cool to take a cruise. And your argument is that not so fast. (laughs) You're probably not, it sounds like. Well, I think that a lot of people tend to see themselves as one thing or another. Um, If you see yourself as the kind of person who is not a cruise person, then the attitude is, I could never do that, and I will never do that. Um, If you do take them, then you maybe take them all the time. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of nuance or middle ground there. But I I think I'm the middle ground because I don't want to do that all the time. But sometimes that's what fits into your plans in the best way if you want to have a vacation. If you have kids and you're going on their spring break. Or, um, for instance, I'm looking at doing something over uh, the week after Christmas when everyone wants to do something and guess where the best deals are. I mean, I'm I'm looking at cruises that it's your food, all your drinks, your hotel, essentially, your travel to different places while you're on it, all that for less money than just flying to Costa Rica or something, which that's the example that I'm looking at. And so it's maybe a cruise isn't my top choice for that particular vacation, but it does end up being a good deal. And that's part of it, too. Like I'm pragmatic and I can put aside my poo pooing of the um, line dancing and buffets and the the convoluted boarding and disboarding process or disembarkment. I can put that aside if it's a good deal, which it sometimes is. So that's part of it. Okay. So you're kind of saying like, say for example, somebody in my family um, wanted to take a Disney cruise. And my initial reaction would be absolutely not. There's no way I'm doing that short of being chloroformed and kidnapped. (laughs) Um, You would tell me, think again, that that's what you're saying. Well, or or do you draw I'm, the line at a I'm Disney I'm wondering cruise? if this is a if this is a hypothetical example or a real example because uh I've never been on a Disney cruise and even I, I guess I'm not following my own advice because I think oh I wouldn't want to go on a Disney cruise that'd be just a bunch of like <laughs> screaming, screaming little kids. A Disney cruise wouldn't be cool as if the other ones are. So, I'm not sure about a Disney cruise in particular, but I have found that it varies according to the trip too. Sometimes, sometimes it's a very um, Larry the Cable Guy clientele, and other times it's more of a fun younger spring break kind of a thing. And it depends on the time of year and where you leave from and where you're going and all that. So not all cruises are created equal. 
But I think in general, again, speaking to the, the coolness factor of it, what is so, what am I considering so inherently uncool about I can sit on, you know, a deck and look at the ocean and drink a drink and then I can go, I could go read a book in a library. I could go get sushi. I can go to the gym or a spa. You can do all that on a cruise ship. And I don't know why it's considered not as cool as doing those same things that you might do on land. Why is it why is it uncool that you're doing it in international waters? Okay, so who would who do you consider cool? Let's see what your your standards are here. <laughs> like on yep. land, okay. who's a cool person? Well, and unfortunately my some of my cool people might not be alive anymore, but like I'm reading an Anthony Bourdain book right now. Oh, I yeah, I mean, he, universally he, accepted cool. Yeah, exactly. And I guarantee he was not a cruise ship person, but yeah. maybe I I wish he would have given it a try because I would have liked to have seen what he said about it. You know, David Foster Wallace, a supposedly cool thing that I'll never do again is the gold standard of shitting on cruises. But as a writer, I know that it is always it is always easier to make fun of something than to admit that you enjoyed it. It's a lot harder to be funny when you're actually admitting that you enjoyed yourself because that requires a little bit of vulnerability to say, all right, this thing that everybody thinks sucks actually is all right. And I feel ashamed almost to admit that, but I I had a good time. Uh, I had a good time on the carnival three night to NASA. <laughs> so... My point of view is that if more cool people go on cruises, then cruises will be cool, right? Because it's just a matter of who's on it. The cruise itself is a ship. You know, it's a, it's a ship with some activities and whether it's cool or not depends on who gets on the boat. And so, you know, join me. Maybe we can push things away from the direction of, uh, as I wrote about the lady who called the breakfast burritos morning burritos. So, I mean, how far does this go, though? Because honestly, I would think that there's a lot of things that get labeled unfairly as cool. Like technically, if we tried a lot of stuff and gave them a chance, even since you work for Car and Driver, let's talk about maybe some cars that get crapped on all the time. What about things like the Chevy Cruze hatchback that never gets the respect it deserves or like the the Mazda 6, right? The, 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 these these cars that don't get the respect perhaps that they deserve and aren't there lots of things? Well, that is that's... a great that's a great example because cars likewise are an inanimate object that get assigned um personalities according to who who drives them and oftentimes unfairly and sometimes just in pop culture, like the Miata is stand in for a goofy car, like Corky Romano drove a Miata and they added one on, you know, Reno 911. Right. And that's not fair. The Miata is like a hardcore sports car. Corvettes are characterized as like, you know, the guy wearing white tube socks and New Balances and jorts. Um, and maybe he's got some Oakleys. And OK, Maybe there are a lot of Corvette drivers who fit that profile, but that doesn't mean that the car itself is inherently one thing or the other. That's just who happens to buy a lot of them. So cruises, same thing. I don't know what it is about the cruise ship phenomenon that tends to appeal to, I don't know, a demographic that uh, maybe I'm trying I'm trying to think of how to how to characterize cool versus uncool because cool is such a moving target that oftentimes people who think they are cool or places that consider themselves cool and are just pretentious and they're really just doing things that everybody else is doing. And that, and there's always whatever you're doing that nobody's done yet. That's the cool thing. And I guess that's probably part of the problem with cruises is that it's the same thing over and over and over again, right? So how are you going to make that something that nobody's ever heard of? What's the new the new thing? It's like the uh, vacation equivalent of the fake leafy background with a neon sign in front of it that says, uh, glad you're here that you take your Instagram photo in front of it. <laughs> something that's so done. You know what I mean? That right, it was, maybe but I mean... it was cool at one point, but... <laughs> There's also a certain, I mean, I'm never one to argue in favor of stereotypes, as she said, as she uh, got 
prepared to argue in favor of stereotypes. <laughs> you know, there are certain ways in which some stereotypes fit the profile. And just to go back to cars, science has shown that some vehicular stereotypes hold true. For example, BMW drivers are, in fact, the most aggressive on the road, right? Like multiple research studies have shown they're the most likely to ignore traffic regulations, drive recklessly, you know, exceed the speed limit. There's probably a feedback loop in play there, but okay, yes. It's but a, I'm just, absolutely. <laughs> the, the, well, this is what I'm saying. We don't, they, those studies don't say why. <laughs> I'm just saying that right. if we talk about, yeah, but go cons ahead. But consider this, whatever all your friends are doing, if you're doing something that they're not doing, that's independent thinking and that's cool. There you go. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to bring this back away from cars, back to cruise ships, away from open roads to open seas. I'm Celeste Headley. This is Hear Me Out, a podcast from Slate. Stay with us. We're back. This is Hear Me Out, a podcast from Slate. I'm Celeste Headley. And with us today is Ezra Dyer. And we are talking about cruise ships and whether or not you're too cool to take a cruise. So since you took that very first cruise with your, at that point, not yet wife, when you realized you were not too cool to enjoy a cruise, have you taken more cruises since then? I've probably taken three or four and it, it works out to once every few years. And I think that's a good that's a good uh, pace for most people. And it shows that that's not the only thing that I like to do. It's just something that works out sometimes that it's the, that's the best thing to do for a given vacation that you want to take. And if you haven't done it in a while, maybe you go, all right, I'll do that again. And another point that I want to make is that there are so few chances these days to actually disconnect and disengage with your non-vacation life when you're on vacation. All those people, you know, that photo of all the people in the line for the top of Everest, they probably all had great uh, phone reception on their satellite phones right there. If you're on a cruise ship and you say, don't get the Wi-Fi package, it's the rare occasion where you are physically, and every in every way, you are unavailable. You're on vacation and it's kind of a great feeling when you're, ship, when you're pushing off from the dock and you're watching whatever city you left from recede over the horizon. You know, you're you pieced out. Nobody is going to be able to bother you about anything. You are out at sea. And that's kind of a rare thing. And even if you are connected, because you, you know, you're not, you can get a Wi-Fi package. You can you probably get your phone to work and all that. Uh, but you're still physically in international waters. You're out there. You can't go deal with anything. And it's sort of a it's a very freeing feeling. Like you're really on vacation when you're on a cruise ship. You're you're vacation and hard. Have you done these cruises without buying the Wi-Fi package? No, of course not. I mean, I would I'd go insane. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but if anybody wants me to come, you know, do something or help out with something or what, you know, just the the random everyday things that say you are at home or you're even a couple hours drive from your house or something like that on vacation, you're still available. And on a cruise, you're really not. And it does put you in a different mindset that it's just relaxing. Lay there and watch the clouds go by and know that nobody expects anything of you. It's nice. Okay. So let's talk about something which is decidedly not cool. And that is being um, horribly sick. <laughs> um, I mentioned that our team member almost immediately got ill. They got COVID, but we know that a lot of people go on cruises and it's common, relatively common to get norovirus or other gastrointestinal issues when you go on cruises. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. I'm not asking for your medical history, <laughs> but how do, you, how do you weigh those kind of risks, which are very much not cool, against the enjoyment of a cruise? I think that it's the nature of post-2020 travel that that's a risk. Um, I, I got COVID last year, not from a cruise, but from an airport, surely, or a plane, because I once uh, once travel started up again in earnest for my job, I had to go fly somewhere. And it was the first like big trip that I took after trips resumed. And uh, of course, I came back with COVID. 
And I think that's a hazard of travel, unless you're in your own RV and staying at campsites or something like that, and you're always outdoors. I mean, I don't know, how are you going to avoid that? And a cruise ship, I don't see is worse than any other kind of thing for a vacation. You can be outdoors predominantly. You're probably, you know, if a Caribbean cruise, you can spend all day outdoors. When you are indoors, again, it's a giant space and you're seldom crammed in with anybody um, unless you're like in an elevator or I know there's this stereotype of everybody's just herded in like cattle, but that's not usually the case because everybody's off doing different things. And like I said, you can go to actual restaurants and you're not in a buffet with 200 people either. So I don't know. The last the last cruise I went on, I didn't get sick at all, except possibly a little bit seasick because on the way back, uh, <laughs> there were 15 foot waves and 50 mile an hour winds. And that I think it was like a thousand foot boat and it was rocking up and down pretty hard. Like you feel like you lay in bed at night and feel like you're going airborne. Uh, so that is that is something to be aware of. But hey, that's adventure, right? You know, you're on the high seas. You get to maybe you get to deal with that. I haven't had any personal experience with norovirus on a cruise ship or COVID, uh, nor has anybody else that I've been with on one. And um, maybe that's your colleague uh, had bad luck, but I think that I, I mean that might be a little bit overblown, just because that's where COVID started. Remember, like there was the Diamond Princess, and COVID was going nuts on the cruise ship, but. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, 2023, the occurrences of gastrointestinal disease on cruises is is at a very high level. That's according to CDC numbers. It's 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 pretty high. They track those. Hmm. The numbers of cases for ships either arriving to the U.S. from a foreign port or, or leaving from here are pretty high. Um well, so, I, just, I can just say anecdotally, I've never personally dealt with that. If I had, I'd probably have a different attitude about cruises if I had been violently ill on any of them, but I haven't. I just look at it, like I said, anywhere you go, I've gotten food poisoning in foreign countries um, because that's a hazard of, I want to try this food where wherever I am. You know, When I, yeah. I, I was in Beijing and I ate whatever I ate, I'm like, I don't know what kind of meat that was, but I'm a little bit worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day you're like i don't feel so good and again it's the adventure travel versus the predictable and the predictable sometimes isn't that bad have you found yourself having to defend your enjoyment of cruises with like your friends or colleagues oh yeah i've tried to in fact like i said uh looking at possibly going on one at the end of the year trying to rope in uh, one of our friends and she's like, oh, oh no, I'm never going on a cruise. <laughs> so we start sending her photos from the prior cruise. You know, we rented that boat where I did beautiful blue water in the Bahamas and the cruise ship is nowhere to be seen. And like, look, you can do this. We're trying to convince her. So I guess I have become a little bit of an advocate for it, mainly because I want people to try it. If you don't like it, then fine. I understand. I can totally understand why you wouldn't like it. But if you're just dismissing it out of hand because you just have this preconception, then uh, you know I would I argue in favor of trying things in general, and that goes for wherever you're. If you want to go uh, on an Antarctic cruise or you want to go hike across the desert somewhere, I don't know what you want to do. You want to go hang gliding at Kitty Hawk. Whatever your idea of fun is, try something different or try something you haven't done. But what is it about cruise that makes you? advocate for them. I mean, what is it that drives you? I mean, I'm, I gotta, I gotta be honest. I'm not convinced. Like I'm not, I get it. I, I do feel like I get your point. Like it's, it's totally possible. I'm, I'm not. Well, let me, let me ask you. Let me I, ask I you. get, I believe that. Let me ask you, yeah, what do ahead. you think you wouldn't like about it? I mean, I can't get past the, the, the non echo friendly part of it. Like I, that part I can't get past. So, you know, I, I, I am convinced that I'm, I'm not cooler than a cruise. You're probably totally right about that. That argument I'll, I'll go with, but I, I, I'm curious as to what makes you so, um, somebody who does all kinds of stuff, who doesn't go for a cruise every year, like this is not a huge part of your life. What makes you so big of a cheerleader for them? 
<laughs> I don't know if I'm that big of a cheerleader. I like I said, if you say you don't want to go on one, I understand. But I also think try it once and see what you think. And maybe you'll be surprised to find that you actually do enjoy this thing that you've uh you've only seen through the lens of David Foster Wallace's essay. <laughs> okay, but before we go. Mm-hmm. Just to dig into here about what makes you want to get people to try it. Okay. Like there's something that makes you want to people to I'll, I'll give boil, this I'll a boil chance. it down. Most people are never going to experience this level of cosseting and luxury for the amount of money that they're going to spend on it in their lives. If you're on a cruise ship, you think about like the level of, I think, you know, the staff on even a carnival ship is basically like two to one, two to one guests to staff. And, uh, you know, you come back and you have the little towel animal in your room and everything <laughs> is generally spotless on the boat. And it, there's just, everyone is invested in making sure that you're having a good time in a way that you don't encounter in, say, a regular hotel or restaurant. It's sort of like high-end luxury travel for mainstream budgets. That's that's what I would say. And I think that's the attraction for a lot of people. And uh, besides the fact that you're going somewhere, it's your airfare, your hotel, your restaurants, everything all in one for you know a pretty good price. And yes, there are downsides, but it's a unique, it's a unique experience. And uh Try it, and if you hate it, then um, I'll give you, I'll refund your money back. No, I won't. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay. I know, just based on statistics, that a lot of people listening have been on a cruise. And I'm willing to bet that whether you admit it or not, you might have enjoyed your cruise. I've never been on one. It's possible that I would enjoy it. So if you have been on a cruise, if you enjoyed it, if you didn't, we would love to hear from you. We want to hear your thoughts on whether cruises are cool or not. Are you too cool for cruises? Are you exactly as cool as a cruise requires? Email us. It's hearmeout at slate.com. Lots of you have been moved to share your thoughts about past episodes, and we love hearing your thoughts ideas, and opinions. A few weeks ago, we had Yehuda Reamer on the show to talk about his vision for teaching kids about gun safety. And a listener named Adrian wrote in about that episode and said this. Reamer seems like a responsible gun owner. Not every gun owner is. While he is a conscientious parent, not everyone is. He cannot measure the rest of the country's gun owners and parents against himself and his friends in their levels of responsibility and conscientiousness. He can influence his kids and maybe his friends' kids to practice gun safety, but his circle is small, and it's unreasonable to assume that all children of gun owners are privy to the same. The consequences to being wrong about this are devastating. Listen, we cover a lot of challenging opinions from gun safety to cruises, and we're sure that you have your own takes. And guess what? We love hearing them. And honestly, how often do you hear people saying, we want to hear your opinions? So please email us. It's hearmeout at slate.com. Hear Me Out is a podcast from Slate, and the show is produced by Maura Curry. Ben Richmond is the Senior Director of Podcast Operations, and Alicia Montgomery is VP of Slate Audio. I'm your host, Celeste Headley. Until next time, speak your mind, but keep it open. Want to feel better, get more exercise, or quit tobacco? Prescription for Wellness can improve your health with personalized sessions based on your schedule. Our expert health coaches and care managers use proven techniques. It's free for UPMC Health Plan members and could lead to the results you want. For more information, visit upmchp.us slash pfwellness. That's upmchp.us slash pfwellness.